guys, Lizard Lee here for the Heaven and Earth Design for Heavenly Beasts Day 19. Slowly getting there. We are past halfway on page 3. I am hoping to make a pretty big dent in it today. I I have a lot of energy. I've been feeling really like low energy, kind of just tired lately. And I know David's had a tummy ache for a while, so... Maybe I, I was just like not feeling well. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm there today, so hopefully I'll get a ton of hours of footage. It's 6:37 a.m. I look crazy. I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have any other updates, so let's just get to cross stitching. Okay, so David and I are a little like a little done with talking about anime for the moment. We might come back to it later. If there is a specific one you guys want us to discuss, comment it, you know, let me know. We'll talk about it if we know about it. Otherwise, we're gonna, we're gonna transition into, like, regular TV shows and maybe even some movies. So, I think we should start with your favorite TV show, honey, which we watched this year. It is Mr. Robot. Would you like to... Do the basic premise minus the spoilery stuff if you can. Uh, counterculture hacker takes on corporation, but I mean, it's not just that. <laughs> <laughs> so Elliot is the main character. He's played by what's his name, Ray Ramy. Sam Ramy. Sam no. S that's not his Is name. It? Sam Raimi? Raimi Malik. Raimi. Okay, I was I was right. You were wrong. I was confident. <laughs> no, you were wrong. But I was confident. <laughs> um, who prior to this, the only thing I really knew him from was uh, that that video game After Dawn, and I mean and he was great in that. Like he can act. He can be very scary if he needs to be, and he's he's just a very versatile actor. Which, if you have seen this show, you know he needed to be. What? Oh, no, I, I, I did not know he was... He was literally only in three video games, so when you were like, oh, he was in a video game, I was like, oh, I did not know that. Yeah, it was a like a motion capture type thing. Like, they, it looks exactly like him. All of the actors for it, it looks exactly like them. It's really cool. Cool. I didn't play it. I watched people play it. <laughs> I can't do horror games. They scare the crap out of me. But you could play Alien Isolation. No. No, I couldn't. Yeah, I can be, watch people play it, but it, I bet you I'd be freaking out. It would be entertaining. <laughs> for those of us in the I, room. <laughs> it does entertain you when I get scared by anything, especially in a video game. Anything is in quotes here because me showing up into the room after announcing myself <laughs> on the you phone. You do not do that. You walk in dead silent. You tap on my chair. Like, no. You're terrifying, and you do it on purpose because you hate me. There's deaf people. We, who know we I'm are there. talking <laughs> about Mr. Robot. Are we? <laughs> we were. <laughs> so Elliot is a freaking genius hacker. Like, yeah, he is amazing at what he does. And like, okay, so to give you like an introduction to the series, in the first episode, he is in a coffee shop. And he's, he's on his laptop, and the the owner comes by. They, they end up talking. I don't remember exactly how it comes about, but it turns out that this coffee shop has just amazing internet. Like, it's just, it's so good. It's kind of ridiculous how good it is for a coffee shop. And eventually you find out that Elliot's character has hacked the owner of the coffee shop, and it turns out he is running some underground bad things like pictures of kids and it's it's not good i will tell you guys you don't see anything about that you hear about it but you don't see it so if that is something that bothers you it's not something you're going to see but this you will hear about show. it <laughs> oh yeah it is i <laughs> it is very twisty like it it throws curveballs at you that you will not see coming and after we finished it i immediately turned around and watched it again because i was like wow you know like did they do easter eggs for this and yes yes they did like and i researched it 
this TV show, it was how many seasons? Four seasons? Five? Four? Four. Four. Originally, the man who created it wanted to do a movie. And then he was given the opportunity to do a TV show for it. And so he fleshed everything out. And I know based on that description, it sounds like, wow, it's going to be crap. Like, it's all going to be filler. No. It was amazing. The dude knows how to write. He knows how to characterize people. It's spectacular. It is totally worth watching if you're okay hearing about really, really, really messed up things. The main character, for the most part, is a good guy, and he is stopping these bad things. So, uh, I said for the most part, uh, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. not always a good guy, but he yeah. tries to be. That's, like... He believes he's he's doing the right thing most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, he does believe that. Yeah. And he meets up with another group of hackers called F Society. And there is a backstory to that. And they're working to just take down this gigantic corporation that just doesn't really have the best morals. Yeah, it's putting it lightly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're supposed to be kind of the stand-in for... Well, literally, part, it's in the first episode. He uh, he has trained himself that whenever he hears the name of the corporation, which is E-Corp, which is kind of your stand-in for every major corporation, mm -hmm. he hears it as Evil Corp. So, yeah, and it's really interesting because like it goes to the extent that other characters, when talking to him, he will hear them say Evil Corp. They're, they're, they're saying E-Corp, but he hears Evil Corp. It's, it's really crazy, and it's really interesting. Like, he is a very eccentric character, and I think it's totally worth watching. Yeah, um, to kind of flesh a few things out. Are we going it, into spoilers, or no? Not yet, no. Okay. Um, it does deal with a lot of hacking at times, but it's not... Okay, first of all, it's not like CSI or anything like that. It, it tries to do, and apparently... Well, it does do... Very realistic depictions of hacking. Still dramatized, but, like, this is theoretically possible. Sort of like an episode of House where, yes, these are real diseases. You getting all six at once is not really <laughs> likely, happen. but, yeah. yes, this is a real thing. Um, it was very well researched, and it handles it well, because it shows that it's mostly about social engineering, which keeps the show interesting, because it's not just staring at somebody staring at code for 45 hours. Um, so yeah, if you're so like, David as a coder really really found that part of it interesting there were times he would rewind it and try and like read the code i wasn't like mesmerized it like he was but it didn't bother me like i didn't sit there and go oh i don't understand what's going on like they broke it down they would sometimes have characters that don't understand hacking so they would explain it to them in layman's terms so even if you don't give a crap about hacking, <laughs> yeah, it's an incredibly interesting show. It's yeah, and that that's the main point I was going to make, which is that it's not about that. It, even though it's a hard show to discuss without spoiling stuff, yeah. But the short of it is, it's really not just about that. It is very much about the fact that this main char character is socially not even awkward, just introverted, mixed with quasi unreliable, and so it's very interesting to watch how that affects the plot and then it just comes down to generally really clever writing mm -hmm. um it's not perfect uh but its highs are very very high and its lows are like average there's nothing where there's maybe one or two things where i'm like eh, i wish they hadn't done that but everything else i think there is... wasn't a single episode that i was upset about rewatching. like i have that problem yeah, with that. other other shows that I absolutely love, like, like Full Metal Buffy. Alchemist. Yes, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood has some episodes that I'm just like, do I have to rewatch this? Do I but want Liz, to? I don't think so. They're on an island. Yeah, and I didn't like it. <laughs> but this this show, I I enjoyed every episode. Like even the ones that did not follow Elliot, like I enjoyed them. And they, I will say, just very similar to Buffy. Dude got creative with it. There is an episode where. The first thing that's said is, we, should we, don't talk. we shouldn't talk anymore. Or, yeah. like, we're done talking. Something like that. And then there's not a single lick of dialogue until the end when a character is like, we should talk. And the thing is, until David pointed out that no one had talked in, since the beginning of the episode, I didn't notice 
that they weren't talking. That is how well done the episode was. Like, it's, they were able to communicate in ways that you didn't need to verbally, so you understood what was going on. And it's just, it was so creative. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I really like Hush in Buffy. It was, it absolutely terrifies the crap out of me. That's the silent episode for Buffy. But the silent episode for this show was... I think it's I want to say it was better, but, like, I love Buffy. I don't want to say that. So I'll just let David say it. <laughs> yeah, and, okay. And we can continue on. Uh-huh. Um, uh, an, an episode you really liked was uh, the way they filmed it. There's a character running through a building, and they put the camera up above her, and so you see her going through the doors... And you you know you can see the walls and it's just one long shot. Well, the whole episode looks like it's one shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks like it's a one shot episode, which, which I is was... incredibly interesting. And like it was. Yeah, yeah, no, it's cool. Like yeah, the the people who worked on that show were just spectacular. Yeah, I mean, my... they thought things through, which a lot of thing you know a lot of people I feel like they don't do that anymore. They don't really. Put well, that I mean, much consideration into it. So, like... And they're also not given that much creativity, which I think is important. Well, so I think the big things that make this show good are that it was basically planned out from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So there wasn't a, like, well, are we getting a third season? I don't know. Well, we'll end on a kind of cliffhanger. Like, we'll resolve it, but we'll put some stuff in there in case we get another... You know. Yeah. And I don't... Like, I, to be fair to writers, like, I think a TV show has got to be one of the hardest things to work on, period. Because mm-hmm. you have absolutely no control. You can't say, well, I think Ahab should kill the whale because the whale quit in season two and so now you don't have a whale, so now it's a rom-com. Like, you just, you have to be able to work with that. So they had most of this planned out, to my understanding, from the beginning, which really shows. Oh, and they yeah. therefore knew what they were doing. They ended it concisely. There are some things that are better than others, but it just feels very complete, which... You know, especially, say, ten years ago, shows were just maybe... Well, not all shows, but most shows were just maybe starting to think, that, like, maybe we should treat our plot with a little more respect. You still got a lot of, like, procedurals and, mm. you know, Monster of the Week stuff and whatnot. But this really does a good job of, like, tying everything together and keeping it coherent, keeping it interesting. And it's legitimately clever. Like, I am a jaded moron who's watched way too much, so even you know, good attempts at something. I'm like, yeah, but I've seen it before. Or, you know, oh, but I saw this person do that movie or this person do this and that show. And so it's not, but this was even with all that floating around in the back of my mind, just uniquely well done. Mm -hmm. Um, Good, like good handling of the plot, good ways to keep it interesting. There's a few things I can point to as cliche, but most of it is like just very, very well executed or completely unique. And it, yeah, it's really good. You should watch it. <laughs> um, I feel it is important to point out, David apparently started watching this show a couple years ago. Yeah, when it was out. <laughs> yeah, and he called, like, one of the twists, and so then he was like, oh, this isn't going to be good, so he dropped it. I feel like it was also because I was waiting for the next season, and I just didn't pick it up because I was like, yeah, I don't have faith on them to deliver, because... Mm-hmm. It was, it, it very, like, it, it, having it done helps because it was very clearly trying to be ambitious. Mm. And I get jaded fast about TV shows trying to be ambitious because I don't think a lot of them pull it off. Like, I really like uh, all my favorite, uh, all my favorite TV shows, I start them and then they get canceled. Well, that too. But, so like, I, otherwise I you get... really like watching episodes, like, watching shows that are complete. <laughs> ah, but otherwise you get, like, Game of Thrones or Westworld, where they try, and then you're like, ah. Yeah, I didn't finish either of those, so That's I'm okay. Fine. <laughs> um, so... But no, okay, so, like, if you first start watching it, and you call some of the twists, keep watching. It is worth it. It's clever. It's well done. It is so clever. Like, it's good enough. Do I don't even... feel we should spoil it yet. Yeah, I was about to say, like, I don't think we should. Or, I, mean... I don't think there's anything gained by spoiling it, because while there's, like, you can, con- that's actually kind of a sign of the writing, like, you can convey without going into detail how good the show is without having to go into immense detail in the plot. Like, it's got really good characters. It does most of them very well. It even does ones that I expected them not to do well, like, oh, this person's just going to be, like, a boring cliche, like, Mm. oh, this is the uber evil, or this is the uber good, or whatever. Um, And it just really has some clever narrative stuff going on that keeps it interesting, so. It has 
amazing musical choices as oh, yeah, well, by the way. They have great music on that show. Yeah, like the theme from Knight Rider. Yeah, they put in Genesis. <laughs> they get a great Carly Rae Jepsen song in there, and it's not Call Me Maybe. Like, okay, I, I loved that song, not gonna lie, but I'm glad it was a different song. <laughs> yeah, you're a dork. It was so good. Yeah, I don't think we should spoil it, because... You should you guys watch need it. to watch it. Like, if this sounds even vaguely interesting, we've rambled about anime for forty it. episodes. Now you should watch this. <laughs> We're on like it's four heavenly beasts day night. Forty shows, forty shows. Oh, I meant okay. shows. Shows, okay. Fine. Yes, sure. be pedantic. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, is there anything else we can talk about that isn't spoilers? Uh... I mean, like a lot of the characters are really interesting. Like, not every single one. Christian Slater nails his role. Christian Slater can freaking act. As does Rami Malek. He <laughs> is the title character, Mr. Robot. You, that's not a surprise. No, yeah, no, he you'll gets know that called soon, that yeah. e, As soon as you meet him, they call him Mr. Robot. So, Christian Slater is amazing in this show. He did such a good job. Knocked it out of the ballpark. Like, I... D I'm telling you guys... As soon as we finished the show, I turned around and started rewatching it. Like, that's that's how much it drew me in. I didn't do that with Brotherhood, all right? I didn't need to immediately turn around and rewatch it and, like, keep my eyes peeled to make sure I didn't miss anything. I did that with this show. And they, they pulled it off. They planned everything that they did. And I, I think that's amazing. Agreed. Mm-hmm. So, do you want to do one from the list? Since that's Okay, so that was one. your favorite it's TV one, yeah. show. It's your favorite. It's your number one it, on most days. Yeah, it depends, <laughs> on the, depends on the mood. There's like two others that could maybe get up there. Okay, so mine, we've already done Brotherhood. So, we've already done Yu Yu Hakusho. <sighs> we have Buffy. I have Buffy. Yeah, I'm thinking Buffy. I, I like Buffy more than Supernatural. Can we? Should we just group that with Angel? I mean, we can, yeah. I mean, I feel like it's... Just, I mean, yeah, it's, <laughs> if you're gonna watch Buffy and Angel, you should watch them at the same time. And you should go between... Like, there are so many... Google a list. Follow yeah, the list. And it's it's perfect. Like, because they, they were filmed at the same time. They, they It was done with the intention that you would watch them in order. You know, there'd be an episode of Buffy where Angel comes in. And then the next episode of Angel, Buffy's there. And they'll talk about what happened in the previous episode. So it really helps to watch them in the correct order because then you can follow a lot easier. But, um, I mean, at this point, who doesn't know what Buffy the Vampire Slayer is? I mean, she's a vampire slayer. She starts out, she's 16, she's in high school. She's found out that she is the successor <laughs> of this incredible power to fight vampires and other demons and vanquish them. And she's amazing. Her watcher, Giles, is a wonderful Englishman. Uh, her main two sidekicks, they're, they're called the Scooby Gang, are uh, Willow and Xander. They're great. You also get side characters like uh, Cordelia, who later goes on to Angel. Uh, I mean, obviously you get Angel. <laughs> <laughs> he is the main love interest for a lot of the show. <laughs> you get Spike. Well, I, I haven't gotten there yet. That's like season two. But Spike. Yes, okay. The other main <laughs> love interest is Spike. Personally, I am a Spuffy fan. I am all about Spike and Buffy. I will say the first time I watched the show, I hated Spike. Because I was, I was all about Buffy and Angel. I was like, they're meant to be. They're perfect for each other. And upon, you know, getting older, maturing, and watching it, and I watched everything this time. When I was growing up, I missed a lot. So it takes a long time for Buffy to even look at Spike, let alone consider, you know, anything romantic with him. So it was very jarring to me going from like, oh yeah, I love Angel to, oh yes, I'm sleeping with Spike. Like what, uh, what? That was, versus when you watch it in order, it's a lot more gradual and it makes a lot more sense. 
and I just, I, I prefer them together. Uh, I personally didn't really care for Angel with Cordelia. It wasn't my jam. I don't know. I have no strong opinions on this either way. Okay. Shipping, uh, like, I don't know, I just... I'm all about shipping. Yeah, well... But I just, I loved the show for the storyline, the episodes. I loved yeah, it. Yeah, the like, show was good. I just, the shipping was, eh, it was there. It mm-hmm. wasn't bad, but, like, it, it, yeah, okay. <laughs> Yes, these characters are sleeping together. Thumbs up. <laughs> Tara and Willow. Okay, I've said... I, I don't know if I've said it on here before, but I say it all the time. I think Buffy, of all the shows I've ever seen that handles someone realizing their sexual identity is not what they've thought it was, I think Buffy handles it the best. When you meet Willow, she has a crush on Xander, and she is totally straight, uh, it doesn't work out with them. She gets a crush on Oz. They hook up, and that's like her first official boyfriend, and she's just so madly in love with him. And it's wonderful, and I love them as a couple. And then Oz has been by a, a werewolf, and it doesn't really work out. He has some problems, so he has to leave in order to try and find a way to cure himself. And Willow is completely heartbroken, and I sob every time that happens. And then they go to college, and Willow starts hanging out with this girl named Tara, who is really, really shy, and they both are into witch and witch stuff and magic, and Tara doesn't ever really come out and say it necessarily, but she's got a crush, and eventually Willow realizes it. And Willow realizes she has a crush back. And I think this is actually something you disliked. They bring Oz back during the middle of this. During the middle of Willow realizing she might not be straight. They bring back Oz. And, you know, so there's a bunch of drama there. And then at the end of the episode, Tara and Willow are hanging out and Oz has left. And Tara's just like, yeah, you know, you you need to be with the person that you love. And Willow looks at her and she's like, I am. And it was just, it was perfect. I love the way they handled it because it was gradual and it was believable. Because, yeah, sometimes, you know, you think one thing about yourself and then you realize, oh, nope. <laughs> Uh, I will say, Joss Whedon has, I don't know how recently, but he's come out and said that he wishes he could have made it more clear that Willow was actually bisexual, rather than, like, yes, at the beginning she was straight, but no, by the end she was a lesbian. Because back then, yeah, people frowned on bisexuality. People still do in this day and age, which is really sad to me. Like, whatever, it doesn't matter. But, uh... Yeah, so I just, it was really nice because they they handled it really well. I think Buffy actually had the first on-screen gay kiss in TV. I think they did. Maybe not, but (laughs) you're going to Google it. (laughs) Gay kiss. Well, it's not going to do. TV shows that broke ground. Uh Uh, Nope. Yeah. Never show me. No, okay, I guess not. Never mind. No. Lies and slander. <laughs> I I genuinely thought it was. I don't know. I it, think it was a. Big is it the deal. first like relationship or? I don't know. I'm sure we'll get. It's oh hey, it's on there. Yeah. It took two seasons. Blah blah blah. Ongoing. Oh okay, that's what it was. It was the first ongoing committed gay relationship okay yeah. okay it was the first of something that's where Rise i was going slander. with it that's where i was going with it that's what counts and it's just, oh it's so amazing like and they kill buffy which is like amazing uh, yeah. Yeah. i okay if the show had ended at season five with the gift i would have been crushed but that would have been a freaking spectacular, powerful ending. Yes, it would have. Which, like, okay, so like, Buffy has what I thought was a very clever thing that I hadn't really seen before, which is Dawn. Which, other than initially hating her with an unrivaled passion, yes, I hate Dawn. Um, well, but just, they get there. Well, no, her first, she gets there. her first, 
first two episodes are freaking atrocious. Mm. Like, just... I get that... So, what you find out is they're trying to mess with you and do that somewhat on purpose. But even then, there's, like, a point where you're no longer just making fun of a trope and just being lazy about it. I mean, it. I technically know, she's a day old in those episodes. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter because the writers aren't. So, <laughs> they... It, I don't know. It just... It was... I mean, that's the thing. She's not... Spoilers. It, she's not a real girl. She is what the monks created her to be. So it makes sense that she's going to be the stereotype of a typical teenage look, girl. I will straight say that there are certain things that are difficult to write. I was just talking about this with someone else. Where, like, for example, you need your character to be abominably stupid. Like, like it, it happens all the time in young adult stuff. Like, where you've got a teenage character and because hormones, they need to be dumb right now. Yeah. And it's relatable and it's believable and if handled poorly, still sucks to read or watch. Because, yes, they're being stupid. Yes, I know better now. Especially as, like, an observer third party or whatever. Or maybe I can't relate strongly. Or maybe I even I can relate. But it's still freaking frustrating, mm. depending on how they do it. And that one episode in particular that tries to just do the whole teenage cliche... Congratulations, you reminded me why I hate watching shows that do that. Like, it, A-plus on failure. Um, My least favorite episode is Still Be or Bad. I yes. hate that episode. I literally walked out of the room when David was watching it, and I was like, ah, have fun, honey, bye. Yeah. Like, that is an episode I do not rewatch because I don't like it. But, either way, the point I was going to say is... Yes, sorry. Yeah, no, before you rudely interrupt... Oh, hush. Um... No, uh, I'm rambling. But the uh, the interesting I thought they did was they introduced Dawn, and you're like, okay, fine, whatever. I would not have expected, or did not expect them to straight just pivot into, nope, this is a character now, deal with it. Yeah, and that was actually really well executed. Not just because it's not what you would expect, and because, again, they executed it very well. And they're like, well, no, it doesn't really matter that we've discovered that what the audience knew immediately, that this person never existed. Well, yeah, because yeah. when you... So I, I watched that episode, like... I don't know if it was when it came out, but, like, I watched it at the right time and order. And I was just like, what the heck? They're all acting like she's always been here. What's going on? What is this? I was so lost! And it's just... It was, it was, oh, I love it. I love Buffy. <laughs> I thought it was, I, I was, I was, well, granted, I get the virtue of getting to watch it back to back to back. Yeah. So, like, obviously I'm not Well, and I told you, like, honey, you'll learn, just watch. Yeah, well, <laughs> I was mostly annoyed with it because I was like, oh, God, they're not going to pull this off. But I was oh, wrong. Oh, no, they did. Yeah, no, they, <laughs> other than that one episode, which was, uh, again, her introduction and her next episode, I think they lean too heavily into the cliches. And it's like, yes, congratulations, you two can write bad plot. Thank you. <laughs> um, Better than Beer what Bad. What is it, Mission I, Failed I Successfully? I watched those. I did not watch Beer Bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have, like, no memory of Beer Bad other than you hating it. Yeah, um, because I walked away and I was like, you, eh. well, yeah, but my probably point on your is phone that, because I made it clear I hated this episode. No, I watched it. I just, I remember, like, yeah, it wasn't a good episode. I would not, like, ah, you're wrong. But at the same time, like, I, I, Dawn being obnoxious was way more burned in my memory than Beer Bad. Mm -hmm. um, I hated Beer Bad. I liked What's Her Name. Anya? Yes, thank you. Yes, Anya's great. Anya was also another surprise in that I did not expect them to pull that off or go the route they did. So. And it was perfect until Xander left her at the altar. That was... I'm still really bitter about that. I, I thought it was okay. No, I'm so bitter about it. I actually thought it was very clever of them to approach that like they did, in that they basically kind of imply that Xander's got some serious emotional damage. Well, and that, family problems. Yeah. yeah. And, and they had not really talked about it, and that's a very real thing, and it was mm. a very interesting thing to see them do that. And they kind of followed through with it, in, like, how would that affect a group dynamic? How are you people going... How are these people going to move on? But at the end of the day, it's Xander and Anya, and you're, like, third-string characters, so sorry, over here we have Buffy, who has to do things, and so, wait, what plot? <laughs> like, it's there, but I I wish they'd pivoted harder into it, because it's a really interesting thing for them to try and handle, and it's not something you see many shows even try to approach, like, especially in the realistic way, like, well, maybe not that it's always like this, but that it very much can seem like a good relationship, and then someone's just not emotionally capable of following through. It's not, like, always... Like, yeah, it, it wasn't like he was afraid of getting married. He was afraid that, yeah, they'd get married, be happy for a few years, 
And then he might beat her. Yeah. Or he might kill her. Or, like, he had genuine fears because of how his parents treated each other and how they treated him. Yeah. And I- and you don't ever see them on camera. But you hear them talking. And you, you see nightmares that he's having where his parents are upstairs screaming at each other. But it's a nightmare. So it's just, it was... I thought they handled Xander really well with his family dynamic. Well, without ever showing it on camera. What I was going to say is that... Sorry. <laughs> um, it's just that... Uh, I have more passion about Buffy. Yes, I'm well aware. <laughs> this is why I didn't even try to talk during Brotherhood. Um, <laughs> I brought you in when I could. Yeah, when you, when you <laughs> Say something so I look Go. generous. <laughs> um, <laughs> talk. No, uh, so for me it was just that they didn't take the easy way out by like starting to make them look like idiots. Because, like, a lot of shows, when they want to do something like that, like, oh, we want him to, like, leave her at the altar because he's got emotional issues or whatnot. Like, oh, okay, we'll make him act like a moron and a jerk or completely out of character for the next six episodes to justify it. And they didn't really do that. It was no, literally he was completely just, ready to get married. Or he's, And yeah. then a future self is how he's presented. Is yeah. like, hey, yeah, you can't marry her. You love her right now. The me, the you that is me in the future... You beat her. You do not want to do that. So you can't do that. Turns out later it was actually a demon getting back at Anya. But because of Xander's emotional damage, he believed it. I thing weaker though. I forgot about that. Oh, you would have preferred if it was actually him from the future? I think they did a good enough job laying the groundwork that they didn't need to be that in your face about it. Like, oh, I'm future you, and I beat, and you're going to beat your wife, and oh, wait, no, I'm really a demon, but now you've got cold feet. Well, Xander didn't find out that it was a demon, did he? I, well, I don't think he did. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he does. Does he? I, it doesn't matter, um, because the point is, is either well, maybe he way... he does. Like, and yeah, well, no, yeah, he does. Because they talk about it. Because he still leaves her. Yeah, because that was the whole point. Yeah. So even then, I thought they had laid enough groundwork that it would have been more impactful if they just had something bring it up to him. Not that on the nose, though. Like, literally giving his fears form in the form of a character who is awfully convenient, given that he knows nothing about this, is, I thought, a little bit less nuanced than they could have been, but whatever. It was I bad. like how they handled it. I mean, I'm still bitter about it because I shipped them so hard, but... But the comics... <laughs> Oh, I'm not talking about the comics. We're talking about the TV show. Yeah, um, this, you hated Andrew, comics. and I loved Andrew. Which one's Andrew? Andrew was the storyteller at the, la- in the oh, last. Oh, the season. evil one. Yeah. Yeah, who became good? Yeah, no, he's still evil. No, he became good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. <laughs> you even see him in Angel coming over, and he's like, "Yeah, no, you can't take care of one of the Slayers. She's coming with me and the other Slayers." Yeah, I. Bye. No, he... and they all followed him, and they yeah, went with him. Yeah, I know. You hated Andrew. Because yeah, he does not deserve the forgiveness. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I mean... Okay, hold on. Between the two of us, you believe more in redemption. What is wrong with this? He didn't get it, though. He didn't earn it, in my opinion. Not even remotely. They just kind of forgive him because he's weak and pathetic. They don't... I mean, he sobbed and felt guilty and was upset mm, and yeah, but wanted to redeem himself. Of- yeah, but he did a lot of horrible... Like, they, I do not feel they handled that elegantly at all. I will leave it there. I felt it was like they flipped a switch and was like, oh, and now you feel bad for him, go. <gasps> I don't feel they earned it in the writing. That's why I don't like him. I mean, of the of the trio, I only thought one of them was inherently 100% evil. I and he's it... the one who got flayed alive by Dark Willow, which was amazing! Mm. Sorry, continue. Yes, dear. Um, no, that's fine. Like, yeah, he deserved all that junk and that was good or, or good enough writing um but no like I, I didn't really like the trio to begin with it felt weak and well that's they, they were just super nerds that was so that's what they were supposed to be was weak well no it felt like weak writing i don't care oh. about how strong they are it felt it, it, it is in a way purposefully weak writing because it's trying to talk about other subjects both in relation to the main villain of the trio who gets flayed alive and the person who flays him alive, who's actually the arc villain, arguably, for that season. So I get why they did it, but I did not love it because it's just... I get where they're going with it in theory, but it just... I don't know. I don't don't think the execution was super good on that. That was probably one of my less enjoyable bits. Like, I don't hate it, but not a highlight of the show for me. Dark Willow was not my favorite season. I don't actually, it's funny because 
it's more them than that. that well, it's things. that season is called the Dark Willow season. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's what it is. Okay, yeah. But I mean, I just in general, it just it wasn't my favorite. I, and I, will, I didn't dislike it. I I like every season, but it's it's not my favorite. And I will say that like talking about what I talked about earlier on Mr. Robot, where like it's nice to have a show that knew it was going to get its seasons and didn't have to feel like it was going to cliffhang every. You can feel that in Buffy a little, and you can especially feel it in Angel, and not just the final season, but the stuff I talked about with Cordelia, where I'm like, no, this doesn't feel right, something happened, and you're like, oh, it turns out she got pregnant, and I'm like, yeah, well, you can tell because of how out, the writing turns is. Turns out she wasn't Cordelia. That was the twist. Well, no, I know, but <laughs> that all comes about because it, it, the the whole way they handled her arc air quotes um yeah i was i was like, very disappointed with how they handled that just because it was so difficult when they when they did bring the real cordelia back it was so difficult to separate the two of them like i i kept going like oh was that cordelia or was that the god that was oh well, man and so i found myself kind of like resenting her and it wasn't for things she did because it just wasn't clear which was kind of the point of that was that you didn't realize it wasn't Cordelia. The whole she ascends to godhood suddenly thing felt out of place and I suspect that's because of things that happened outside the hands of the writers. Like, I don't believe that was written down as part of the plot. I absolutely believe. I'm pretty sure it was. We looked this up and you told me that it was something like, yeah, mm-hmm. stuff happened. Either she got pregnant or something happened outside the show and they had to work around it or she left the show. We talked about this. She, yeah, but yeah, the and, godhood thing wasn't because she got pregnant. It was... They, they made her pregnant on the show. She actually got pregnant in real well, life. Well, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not saying it's anyone's fault necessarily, but that's kind of my point is that it did not flow. And then the way they brought her back and the way they handled it, like, it's, to me at least, a sticking point of, like, it didn't feel elegant. Like, it did not, well, it did not even elegant. It didn't feel logical. Like, there's some weird plot points in Angel of all of them, namely mm-hmm. revolving around his kid. Connor. Yeah, you hated Connor. Yeah, I hated Connor. He, he... Everything about Connor makes the show worse. Which is strong coming from me, because I think of the two, I mostly prefer the characters in Angel, but I prefer the stories of Buffy. Because Buffy feels like it's got more consistent writing, but I just kind of like the characters in Angel. Joss had a bigger hand in Buffy than he did Angel, from what I understand. And it also just felt like Buffy had got to stay on track more. It didn't feel Mm. like there were suddenly like, oops, someone left the show, or oops, someone's got a real-life problem. We need to just... Well, we, we wrote, like, we've, we've laid 30 plot hooks for this. Yeah, well, they're out for four seasons. Oh, uh, okay. Also, we might get canceled. Wrap it up just in case. Like, and that's kind of what I was talking about, where I there's a lot of shows that I like that do that, and it's a shame. Like, I really liked Boston Legal, even though it's really weird. Um, it's, uh, oh my god, James Spader and William Shatner. Is it James Spader? I'm not a huge fan of Shatner. He But you haven't seen... Very weird. He's a lawyer. <laughs> it's I also, feel like that's going to be very unsuccessful. Because... He's in his 50s... No, it was an amazing... Show. Okay, we're... Well, no, wa- no, no, no. I mean, like, in reality, if Shatner were to become a lawyer, I feel oh, like this he wouldn't not... be a good one. <laughs> as far... Like, okay, he's not a for... smooth talker, and no, that's a big part of being a good lawyer. Ex- no, he is exactly the kind of lawyer that... First of all, it's not a serious show, not even remotely. Oh, okay. It's, yeah. It's... it's what was the one that they made fun of in, like, Futurama? Sexy female lawyer was based on... Oh, my God. In the I have 90s. no idea what you're talking about. There, there's some... <laughs> there are all these... Whatever. Point is, it's completely ridiculous. He's a lawyer. And it was a show that I really enjoyed because it was stupid, but it was fun stupid, and it was unique stupid, and it makes no freaking sense. It ditto with West Wing. Because they're both shows where they bring up characters and they bring up plot points and then they never talk about them again because, oops, those characters left the show or we never really had a plan for that or they didn't test well with audiences or whatever. And so there's just that moment where you're like three seasons later and you're like, wait, whatever happened to so-and-so? And And like the last you saw of them, they were about to go fight City Hall and then you never hear from them again. Because, and that's obviously a way, way worse thing than what happened on like Angel, but... I always feel bad when shows have to do that because it's like there's probably some writer who's ripping their hair out because they had a really good arc or a plan mm. or a plot. And the producers but, were like, chop, chop. 
<laughs> yeah, well, it's like, yeah, that person left the show. What? But that's the protagonist. It's a rom-com now. Deal with it. Like, you know, you can't... Yeah, the worst <laughs> thing, I think, that happened on Buffy was um, the woman that was the head of uh, Riley and all of them and created Adam was like, yeah, I want to leave the show. And they were like, oh, okay, we'll have Adam kill you and Adam will take over your spot because they built her character up so much. The, the professor, do you remember who I'm talking about? Yes. I, they built yeah, her up so much. Yeah, I remember that. She was supposed to be the villain. Yeah, She that was supposed to also, be the main antagonist. And I remember thinking and something And then Adam happened. just killed her out of the, like as yeah. soon as he wakes up and you first see him, he kills her. Yeah. That was not supposed to happen. She was supposed to be, like, his mom, and he was going to follow along with what she said. What? Related to DBZ, which is what we were supposed to talk about but didn't because we're kind of tired of anime, this actually happened for DBZ as well because the Android Saga. Uh Uh-huh. So the story goes, and I don't know how true all this is or how accurate it is, but apparently there's the two androids, 19 and 20, Mm. which are a plastic or sort of like a China doll figurine-looking character and an old man. And so, like, apparently his editor or producer or whatever looked at it and went, ha ha ha, real funny. Like, those can't be the arc villains. They look ugly. Get me better villains. And he was like, oh, okay, I guess we're not going to have them be the villains. I'll come up with something else. And so he came up with 17 and 18. And he's like, ha ha ha, real funny, but they're not evil looking enough. We can't have just, like, young kids be the villains. He's like, okay. So he made Cell. And they're like, yeah, too ugly. So he made Cell too. Uh, no, really, when's he going to get to his final form? Fine. Here's, pr- like, legitimately, there's supposedly him, someone who would know talking about all this and how he had to keep changing his plans for the plot because he was told to. And so, like, I always get sad about stuff like that because these writers have good ideas, maybe, and you don't even get to see them because stuff outside of their control is just like, nah! Yeah. Narrative, who cares? (laughs) Yeah. So, yes, Buffy. Uh... I think, yeah, well... I was gonna say that I, I think my favorite characters are all an angel, though. Like, my favorite character from Buffy is definitely Spike, but... I love... Sp- Spike is my favorite character of all time. He... And then my second favorite character is Wesley Wyndham Price. Yes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know his full name. Slash what are you talking her back about? backup when I get hit by a bus. Um, <laughs> I mean... Yeah, so... I would be uh, okay <laughs> with all three of you. <laughs> Good to know. Um, so, yeah, Funny. no, um... Spike. Okay, yeah, you really like Spike. Well, not, not, like Spike, his actor does a great job, and they do some really, really clever things with him that I did not expect. Which, it's kind of funny because, like, you even said that apparently he's supposed to die in the first season, and they decide to keep him around because of his how well his character was received and, and how he was. Odd way, like I almost feel like they played with that in the writing, where he's kind of like a villain who doesn't know what he's supposed to do for like two seasons, and that the, like him being drunk over um, his crazy. Drusilla mm-hmm. was so one of my favorite episodes where he just shows up and he's a complete wreck. Oh like, yeah, that I, was great. That was great. Um, so yeah, no, and then they did some very good stuff with him later and yada yada yada. Um, Who is your favorite on Angel? You liked Cordy. I don't. I don't... Cordy was fun, but again, I just they didn't. I don't feel they did a great job with her. Mm. So well, you liked her prior to all that. Wesley has a pretty good arc. Was, um, it, was it Lauren that was your favorite? Lauren is generally my favorite. So they don't <laughs> do enough with Lauren, though. Like, mm. I was hoping they would do more with him. Because I, I would used to catch Angel and Buffy on... Well, mostly Angel, actually. Because it was on, what, the CW at 6 in the morning they when I'd wake up? They were on two different Well, no, I'm talking, like, channels. reruns way after it uh, ended. Oh, like, okay, I'd yeah. wake up and, like, it's... Or, rather, I'd still be up. The sun would be coming <laughs> up. I'd turn it on and either UHF, The Fifth Element, or Angel was on one channel. And I would watch <laughs> one of those. So... That was how I caught Angel. I'm like, this Lauren guy, when I am sleep deprived at five in the morning, he's pretty funny. So <laughs> He's pretty funny when you're sober and it's a normal hour. Yes, dear. Lauren um, was wonderful. I wasn't I, drinking as a teenager. I, <laughs> I'm just saying. No, yeah, Lauren is great. Lauren, um, yeah, I love Lauren. And I, I loved Lindsay, too. Christian Kane can act. <laughs> and I loved Lila. His anti-psychic techniques. What? Those anti what? No, 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 in general. <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah, like even the bad guys were cool characters. <laughs> like it yeah. was 
so good. And they had fun with it. Like I, uh, th- I will admit, I loved the angel. Again, I, I wish they could have kind of kept it on the rails a bit more, but, like, the core idea of, like, well, what's going on? Uh, well, evil law firm, all right. Well, now we head the evil law firm, all right. Okay, that like, happened in season five, okay? I know, but, well, like, the way they got there was interesting, and mm-hmm. I actually liked that. It was a clever idea. I just wish they'd gotten to follow through on it a bit more, because... The, the, the overarching plots of Angel get a little lost at times. Oh, and the fallen god. That was good, too. Yeah, I was about to say, like, you are my sunshine. Yeah. Oh, my God, you guys. Fred and Illyria. Oh, my God. I was sobbing, and I've already seen that, like, ten times. Like, David was over here, nothing, stonewalled, and I was sobbing like a baby. Like... <laughs> love you. Ugh, I love you more. <laughs> All right. Do you have anything else to say? We're at the end. Uh, we are at the end. Okay. <laughs> Love you. Love you too. And that is the end of Four Heavenly Beasts, The Heaven and Earth Design, Day 19. I got six hours and 43 minutes of footage. And David's over here, wrapped up in a blanket. I don't know why, because it's not cold. Love you. Love you too. Love you more. Love you. Love you. So that is the progress. The snake is almost done. Like, and, and honestly, you can really start to see the beginnings of the turtle too. That's his head. So, yay. Getting there slowly but surely. Surely you can't be serious. Don't call me Shirley. You said, you're supposed to say I am serious and don't call me Shirley. <laughs> I am sorry for my deficiencies. Nah, yeah, that's not one of them. It's okay. It, so Airplane is some? definitely one of the best comedies of all time, though. I'm just saying, sometimes you leave the toilet lit up, and it's annoying. So... Sometimes? Okay, always. But you didn't no, use to. Yes, you do! <laughs> I swear I'm going to start taking a picture and sending it to you every single time I go in the bathroom, and the toilet lit is up. I'm gonna start doing it. I mean, it's annoying, right? It's so annoying. It's gross. You flush the toilet and that gets everything everywhere. No, you don't. That's why you should close it. No, you don't. I bet you right now, if I were to go into our bedroom, that bathroom in there, it's probably up because you were the last one in there. I bet you. <laughs> All right. This has absolutely nothing to do with the video. And you're not even you're not even on the screen. What My what was what? There. No, that that <laughs> No, that's that's worse. That's just worse. You no. No. Like, subscribe, share, comment. All of that jazz. We'll see you guys in the next video.